Amen. Let's just up our two hands as we sing this loud and clear. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is with me. Done great things. He has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Thank you for the gathering of your champions here. A gathering of God's eagles. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray today that you open our understanding. Amen. Lay your hands upon us. Amen. Help us, Lord, Amen. to mount up with wings as eagles. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mr. Vasi, God bless you. Well, it's been a long day and you have been here for a while. Listen to various lectures. <laughs> so I do not wish to waste your time further. Uh, just share one or two things. Then we go and pray. The prayer we are going to pray today, if you pray that prayer and you lose your voice, <laughs> but you achieve what you want to achieve, you will have done a good bargain because your voice will definitely come back. But if in a place like this you decide to be a spiritual gentleman, <laughs> will be a tragedy and a disaster. So for the next few minutes, I want to scratch the surface of a deep topic called the obscure minister. Just scratch the surface of a deep topic called what? The obscure minister. Before I go into the scriptures or anything, the first point I want to make here is that there is no quiet anointing. No. The anointing is always an announcer. So anywhere the anointing is, there will be announcement. 
So if you are somewhere and you are not announced, something is absent. I, I, I'm not sure you are following what I'm saying. The announce, anointing is an announcer. When you pray that, let the anointing that will announce me fall upon me. You are praying a great prayer indeed. And let me tell you one secret. All that you need to cause an announcement where you are is just one miracle. Just one miracle like this is enough to change the whole of your environment. There is somebody here, you will experience that miracle. <laughs> your amen is too weak for this meeting. Amen. With a kind permission, may I have my seat, please? Thank you. Jesus, our master, says something very interesting in Matthew chapter 5. A lot of us don't look at these things very deeply. Matthew chapter 5. Jesus, our master. Or wasn't he the one that said, greater things than this shall ye do? He was the one that said it. Wasn't he the one that said, have you not read your book? I say unto you, ye are God. Fine. In Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5. I read from verse 13. Very popular passage. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, where which shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. But it's verse 14 we are really going. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Can you say cannot be hid? It cannot be hid. If it's hidden, it's because it's not set on a hill. Maybe it's set on the valley. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light unto all that are in the house. And I'll say, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and they give a light unto all that are in the house. In First Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, If you are there, say yes. yes. He raised up the poor out of the dust. So there is a position called the dust. And lifted up the beggar from the dunghill. There is a position called the dunghill. To set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. Do you follow that scripture? God is an expert at changing people's position. And he will change somebody's position today in Jesus. In the first, same first Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel 16 from verse 11. This is going to be a short meeting. You have been, there, you have been here all day. First Samuel 16, 11. If you are there, say yes too. Yes. And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. I hear all thy children. And he said, 
there remained yet the youngest. And behold, he kept the sheep. They came to somebody's house to ask for his children. He brought them out. But there was one particular one he did not bother to bring out. He didn't consider that one as one of the children. <laughs> so he was left doing something else. Behold, he kept the sheep. And someone said unto Joseph, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he said, he sent and brought him. Now it was a ruddy and without of a beautiful countenance and good day to look on. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. <laughs> and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Are you following these scriptures I'm reading to you? The same first Samuel chapter 17. Verse 15. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. So much for that one. The first question is this. When we say something is obscure, what do we mean? What's obscurity? It means a condition of being unknown. They don't know you. It means uncertainty of meaning. The meaning is not clear. It means condition of being unimportant. That's what we mean. It means being nameless or being anonymous. Are you following what I'm saying? It means darkness. Dark, darkness. And when you say darkness, darkness is simply the absence of light. And whatever is dark, is hidden from view. Is hidden from view. There are more obscure ministers in our world than those who are visible. But Jesus said, Ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. What then do we mean by the spirit of obscurity? There's a spirit called the spirit of obscurity. What do we mean? I will tell you what it means one by one now. Number one, it means to be talented but unknown. You're very talented but nobody knows you. You know that the talent is in you. You know people of lesser talent who are being celebrated, but you don't see yourself being celebrated. Two, it means to be gifted but hidden. You are gifted, you are anointed, but you are hidden away. Are you following what I'm saying? <laughs> An usher from your church goes on holiday abroad. They ask him to minister somewhere and then uh, he receives greater blessing than you that is ushering under. But you are hidden. Three. It means the enemy it means the enemy localizes your championship. You become a local champion. That is a spirit. Four. It means to be present but absent. 
And this, a person is there, it's not making any impact. Five. It means to be covered with spiritual cobwebs. Person is covered with spiritual cobwebs. Sometimes when intercessors are praying, they see churches covered with cobwebs. People don't come to such churches because there's a spiritual cobweb around it. Six. It means to be born great but tied down. That's the spirit of obscurity. Seven. It means that the inferior is made to rule the superior. The inferior is made to rule the superior. Eight. It means that the head is relegated to the tail. It's supposed to be the head, but it's relegated to the tail. Now, it means being ignored at the corridor of greatness. Being ignored at the corridor of greatness. Eleven. Ten. Good. It means testimony famine. As a famine of testimony. Eleven now. It means mysterious closing of opportunity doors. Mysterious closing of opportunity doors. And last but not the least, it means stars being shut down. Stars that have been shut down. Are you following what I'm saying now? This is a spirit that is raging against so many ministers, especially at this last season of human existence. David was highly gifted. David was highly talented. David was a shepherd. David was a warrior. David was a musician. With bare hands, he killed the lion and the bear. He also killed Goliath with an ordinary sling. But despite his talents, and despite everything that has been deposited into him, the man was kept in the wilderness looking after the sheep, keeping company with the sheep in spite of his talent. And if not by divine intervention, David will have died unknown. Possibly wasted away with all his talents in that wilderness or in the bush where he was looking after the sheep. There are people in our midst here today that right now in ministry, they are 20 years behind. 15 years behind. 10 years behind. I know by the spirit of the prophets that there are people here today that have been completely covered by this spirit of obscurity. The enemy has decided that you will not be announced. And the enemy has decided to relegate you to the background. It is for you to decide today that you will no longer accept that kind of position. Because it is what you tolerate that will happen. So if you decide you, you are no longer willing to tolerate being uncelebrated, being unknown, you are in a street, somebody wants to come to your church and they ask, can I go to uh, this church? And the person you are asking on the street where your church is present is asking whether it is a political party. Because it's not making any impact. 
When the spirit of obscurity is taken off, they will take notice of you. The Bible says, after they have claimed the apostles, they whip them and they warn them, don't preach to anybody in this name again. Blah, blah, blah. The Bible says, after they have looked at them, listened to them, warned them, the Bible says, they took knowledge <laughs> that they have been with Christ. They took knowledge that these men, they have been with Christ. And after all the whipping, they, they were whipping them, but they were smiling. They were laughing. Imagine somebody brings horse whip here and you begin to use the horse whip and I'm smiling. <laughs> Glory be to the name of the Lord. <laughs> I thank God <laughs> that I'm counted worthy <laughs> to suffer. Ah. To suffer kuboku. <laughs> so they took knowledge that these men, they have been with Christ. And things began to change. I know that many of us have come from poor homes. I agree. Many of us have come from lowly background. I agree totally. But the fact that you were born in a manger does not mean that you should die in the manger. Because Jesus was born in a manger. But today he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Every time the hand of destiny propelled David to the limelight, a contrary force wants to push him to the background. Have you noticed? Every time that hand of destiny is pushing forward, something pushing to the back. One day, God raised a voice for David in the, in, the, in the palace of Saul when Saul was running mad. Saul was running mad. And somebody said, let's look for a musician to play so that this spirit will stop troubling the king. And out of the blues, somebody there that David did not know said, behold, there is a boy. I can play this instrument. And God raised a voice for David where David had no voice. An unknown person began to converse for him. May God raise a voice for you. Where you don't know anybody, may he raise a voice for you. In the name of Jesus, let your heaven roll a thunder. God raised the voice for him and they brought David to the palace and he was playing for the king and the king was getting better. But the result of it is that the man that he came to play for wanted to kill him again. Those forces that once to obscure his life, they were there again to oppose him. Again, he went and killed Goliath. With the killing of Goliath, he came straight to the limelight. But what was the result? King Saul began a battle against his life that day and drove him with all the popularity into the wilderness. And for 20 years, he was running a cascader from King Saul. That spirit of obscurity that doesn't want him to see the light of the day pursued him for 20 years and was keeping at the back of the desert. And if not for divine intervention, even with his killing Goliath, he would have died like bush meat in the forest. If Saul had killed David in that forest, that's all. Nobody will read the psalm today. Nobody will hear anything today. The spirit of obscurity will have caught up on him. I pray for somebody here. Every power that is pushing you back into the wilderness, I command you to be arrested now. Let it be arrested. 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 In the name of Jesus. When Samuel came to the house of Jesse, the father of David did not parade him. In spite of the fact that he was much more talented than all his brothers put together. They did not, they did not parade him. If David had vied for a political position, his own father would not have voted for him. By destiny, David should be in the limelight. But the spirit of obscurity repeatedly kept him at the back bench. At the back bench. Despite the hard work, talent, 
qualification, potential, anointing, remarkable achievement, the spirit of obscurity did not want to allow this fellow to shine or to come to the limelight. Every power against your rising to shine shall be defeated here today. What do we do? I said this is a short message because it's prayer. We really need to pray. You've been here for a long time. I'm just crashing the surface. What do we do? Three things are necessary. If you want to escape from this strange spirit, three things are necessary. Number one, you must learn spiritual military intelligence. What did I say just now? Spiritual military intelligence. You say, what is military intelligence? Military intelligence is the business of learning. Number one, who the enemy is. Military intelligence is the business of learning. Number one, who the enemy is. Number two, how he operates. Number three, what his objectives are. Number four, how is planning to accomplish those objectives? That's military intelligence. And so, in the whole world, every nation, they have a department they call intelligence. In Nigeria, we call our own SSS. In some places, they call their own KGB. In some places, they call their own CIA. They are, the CIA means Central Intelligence Agency. They gather intelligence reports for their government. Our greatest spy and our greatest intelligence agent is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The king of Syria gathered his people and said, which of you here is a spy that tells Elisha what is going on? Uh. <laughs> there is no spy. <laughs> there is no spy here. That tells the king of Israel what is going on. There is no spy here. He said, there is Elisha. He said, Elisha that tells everybody what is going on inside your bedroom. The Holy Spirit is a spy. So you must learn spiritual military intelligence so that you can know what and who you are fighting. In some territories, while we have our churches, there are strong men to deal with. If we don't deal with that strong man, there will be no growth. Because in the spirit realm, they will be chasing people out of the church. And you say, ah, but why is that possible? Ah, is the, church, the church is the gate of heaven. And the church is supposed to be the most powerful instrument on earth. Remember that though most of those who will rush into the church to surrender their lives to Jesus, to get born again, are children of the devil. So when their senior uncle is at the gate, asking them to go back, <laughs> they will go back because they have not entered yet. If they entered, uh -huh. You may capture them. But the senior brother, their uncle from the gates of hell, is at the gate, ushering them away. There's a dark angel placed at the door of the church, ushering people, ushering people away. If not there with that one, you remain obscure. There are people here looking at me now. That by now, uh, they ought to know you, who you are. I pray once again that any power that wants to make you obscure shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Two, the second point we need to note is the principle of inquiry prayers. The principle of inquiry 
prayers. Enquiry prayers is to say, is there any word from the Lord? That's enquiry prayer. Is there any word from the Lord? This situation I'm going to, is there any word from the Lord? Is there a strategy the Lord wants me to put in place? The strategies are different. The strategy that works for one ministry may not work for another ministry. The one that works for another church may not work for another church. So you need to, a specific strategy. That's why Moses told those people, say, see thou to it. That thou doest everything according to the pattern which was shown to thee. Every man who is out for the work of God will get a blueprint from the master. If you don't have that blueprint, there's nothing to operate. Nothing to operate. You need that blueprint from the Lord. When you have been called and there's no blueprint, you look like a man just floating on the sea. On the sea. Some are even confused. They don't really know who their father in the Lord is. They don't know who their spiritual father is. They don't, they don't understand. Right. So when you are confused like that, problem. And one of these days, I'll bring my wife back here to talk to you. So when you say, uh, Dr. Okoya is my mentor, and you see his wife standing here, you see that the wife does not have baby's lipstick on her lips. She doesn't have jewelries that will be touching her belly button. She doesn't have bangles that will be touching her chest. She doesn't have giant witchcraft earrings that will be touching her shoulder. And tight, tight clothes that will be showing you the contour of her body that everybody will be looking at instead of listening to the message. And you claim to that Dr. Lukoya is your mentor. And that's how you dress. It's a lie. <laughs> that's the truth. Yeah, yeah, now this is my ear. I don't have jerry coil on my head here. So if you are here, you are, you are jerry coiling your hair. I'm not your mentor. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I was I was at Heathrow Airport and a woman came to greet me. Say, Gio, how are you? I said, I'm fine. The woman was wearing trousers. It's good. You could wear maybe some trousers are even good. This trouser that this one is there is on a, in the middle of a bum bum. You know that kind of trouser that is as if it's going to fall off. At our tummy, the, the lower part of our tummy was outside. I could see her belly button. And she had this, uh, uh, it's bad enough to even have one big earring on your ears. She has three. Three, three holes. Three, three, yeah. And she said, Gio, how are you? I said, fine. I said, say, God bless you. Sir. I said, God bless you, man. And I carried my bag. I wanted to go and say, ah, I, I'm a member of Mountain of I said, and, and you are what you say, me, I'm your Gio. I, I reject it. <laughs> A Jew. <laughs> I'm not. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> so e each man must have his own blueprint from the Lord. You must know who your father is and who your mother is. If a child does not resemble the father, does not resemble the mother, the best name for the child is what? I didn't say so. <laughs> pray and quarry prayers have your blueprint ready because if you are not working according to heavenly blueprints no matter what fasting and prayer you do no matter what you are doing the place will, it will not announce you because you are not doing everything according to the pattern given unto you or you may even have no pattern there are some ministers no pattern. If you see this one from America, you copy it. See that one from South Africa, you copy it. You copy it. 
and then that becomes a serious, serious problem. Serious problem. You take uh, Reverend King and ask Reverend King. <laughs> you, present, you, you take a little bit from Reverend King, a little bit of Jesus, Jesus of Onyibo, and then you get another one again from tuberculosis. So, and then you don't know who you are. know who you are. The third thing you need to know is to know the mysteries of the anointing. The mysteries of the anointing. When you are able to key into the mystery of the anointing, it will announce you. Even if you, if you are a quiet person, you do not wish to be announced, the anointing will definitely announce you. The anointing is a noise maker. It will make noise. Even if you don't want to make noise. The anointing will make you to be noised abroad. Just like the apostles were just coming to their prayer meeting to pray and the anointing was going to announce them. And the lame man by the temple got healed. Everybody knew that lame man. In fact, they caused confusion in the temple that day. People rushed to where they should not rush to because something had happened. It announced them. It announced them. And these men became celebrity instantly. Celebrity instantly. Because uh, they were able to defeat the anti-anointing spirits that has been working against their lives. Where they were running a casketa, going back to fishing. But that stopped instantly. I pray that the Lord will move you to your next level. This afternoon, there are some very serious prayers to pray here. And this is a prophetic message for many of us. Once the mystery of obscurity is removed from you, the next thing that will come in is announcement. Announcement. Once the mystery is removed from you, the next thing that will come in is that neighbors will begin to complain that the cars that are coming to your meeting are blocking the road. Then you have started. Then you have started. When neighbors are not complaining, say, ah, every time they are holding service, they say, ah, they always confuse this place. Too many cars parked there. Then you are just warming up. Warming up. So I'm praying that somebody here today will catch that fire. Amen. Amen. Sometimes when we travel abroad, we face a lot of embarrassment as Nigerians. Immediately they see your green passport. Problem. Problem. When people come from Ghana, nobody harasses them. People come from Cameroon. Hmm. South Africa, they don't bother. But immediately Nigerian plane is about to land. All the policemen that were sleeping they wake, they wake up. <laughs> they wake up. It is only on Nigerian flight you will be coming down and at the mouth of the plane as you are coming and say, um, excuse me, as you are coming down from this plane, please hold your passport uh, because the immigration people are at the door of the plane waiting for you. It's only in Nigerian flights. And immediately you are coming out, the first thing you are going to see is a dog. A dog. So put your bag down. Let the dog be smelling it. Dog will smell your bag. And if the dog crushes your bag and doesn't allow your bag to go, they'll just push you aside. Right? So they embarrass. They embarrass us quite a lot. Praise the Lord. There was a day I was going for a crusade in the United States of America and at the immigration. The man said, what's your duty? I said, I'm a pastor. What are you here to do? I said, I'm going, to, I'm going here to minister. He says, okay. So you call yourself a pastor? I said, yes, sir. He said, okay. What is John 3.16? <laughs> I now looked at his face. He said, sir, even a Muslim in my country 
knows John 3.16. So I should read it any, anyway. So I read it. So God so loved the word. Gave his son, the begotten son. And those who ever believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And I said, God loves you too. I said, no, it started, it started searching my bag. Search my bag. It turned the bag upside down. It, it looked at my outline, message outline. It read everything. All the books I had, it opened every page of the book. Then he said, I should go and bring my luggage from downstairs. He took the luggage, went through my clothes one by one. Couldn't be bothered whether I wear. They were my underwear or my singlet. Did all that. So I was watching him. He said, Why is, do you have a laptop? I said, yes. He said, bring it. I, took, I gave it to him. I said, but there is nothing there. It's new. He took it away. Came back. I said, there is nothing in this laptop. I said, but I told you. That is new. So, uh, and you see, you don't go there and say, I'm there for ministration. I can't be telling lies that I'm there for something else. Right. But if you get there and you say, I'm a Catholic priest. Go, 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 go. Nobody, ah, nobody will touch you. Catholic. Pentecostal. Uh -huh. hey. So when he has finished checking, when he said, now you can go after three hours. I said, sir, can I ask you a question? Said yes. So what were you looking for? <laughs> so what were you looking for? He looked at me. He said, "Hard drugs." I said, "Hard drugs." I said, "But I just told you that I'm a pastor." Said, uh, here we go again. We caught a pastor here yesterday with hard drugs inside his Bible. So because of that, they embarrass us quite a lot. Quite a lot. But one day something happened to me. <laughs> uh, I was trying to go into London. It was that day they say one governor in Nigeria dressed like a woman and escaped. That day, uh, all the Nigerians that showed up, they showed us pepper. They, they, if you see the question, they were harassing me with all kinds of questions. After some time, they said, okay, you follow this policeman there, I'm going to bring your bag upstairs. So they went down, brought my bag upstairs. So they asked the woman to search my bag. The woman opened the bag. He saw books. She saw books. She saw prayer in. She took the book. Look at the name of the author. <laughs> Look at the name of my passport. Say, excuse me. I said, excuse me, are you <laughs> are you Dr. Lukoya? I said, yeah, say my God. And we have been detaining you here. Say, ha. Say, please, don't tell anybody we detain you. <laughs> say, because say, because the head of the immigration at this Heathrow airport have been looking forward to the day you will pass. Because he wants to know you. Say, because he said this is the book that they transport most here. This book the most transported book in this airport and that he wants to know who wrote this book said the man will be very upset if I tell him that I was detained they now apologize I said you can go praise the Lord but if you are obscure they will have locked you up giving you the bread of sorrow and tea of sorrow to drink later they will ask you to go Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. All eyes closed. These are the kind of prayers some ministerial destinies have been waiting for. Can you shout this loud and clear with with merciless violence with a spirit of enough is enough every power, every power. stealing my glory Sat 
Be more aggressive. I want to be more aggressive. The Bible said the violent take it by force. Every arrow, Every arrow. Fired, into fired into my star. Because the enemy can dim the star of a person. Stars can be shut down. Star can be dimmed. Every arrow, Every arrow. fired into my star. Jesus Pata setela kayaba Oh yes Aha aha something is happening here today Spirit of the living God move move Move, 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 move. In Jesus' name we pray. Aha. Powers assigned to make me obscure. Something is about to happen now. <laughs> Can I hear you shouting this loud and clear? Yeah! In the name of Jesus. Aha, aha, aha. Posati katala kaya boshanta. Banarea barabosa. Bakapola Kayaba, Batanda Kayaba Shentara Bosopolaba. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Jesus name we pray Amen. this particular prayer <laughs> anything can happen also if you are afraid don't pray strong man assigned to bury my glory die in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus Yes. Open your mouth, open your mouth, don't be afraid, that's why we're here. In Jesus' name we pray. So power of the grave. Power of the grave. Over my ministry. Jesus break the power of the grave aha 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 yes 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 Yes, 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 yes. Aha. In Jesus. 
Jesus' name we pray. That's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Makatenda ya bushende. Ribo sepia mikaraba. Every curse and covenant of obscurity. In the name of Jesus. 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 Makatenda kaya bo shentera bo kopola ba. Dase pola katanda ya ba. Louder, 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 louder. In Jesus name we pray. Anointing that we announce me. Uh -huh. Can I hear you saying that loud? Look at me now. In the name of Jesus. Anointing that will announce me. Look at me now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Jesus, open your mouth and declare. Lift me up. Lift me up. Makaya bo shente raba santa. Bore ka satanda kaya bo shente raba. Jesus, then we pray. The Bible says, The earth waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Aha, Makate Sete Yaboshenderaba. You will shout this loud and clear. Your name. Daniel Olukoya Hear the word of the Lord You are talking to yourself now Can you shout it loud Manifest In the name of Jesus Open your mouth and decree it Manifest in the name of Jesus. 